Okay, we'll now move to our school board um, segment of the forum. There are four candidates that will be represented tonight. We have three of them here with us. Uh, candidates were allowed to submit a written statement if they were unable to be here. We do have one for school board and one for commissioner, which we'll get to a little bit later. So I'm going to start off with um, reading the written comment from ECP, who is a, a school board candidate for District 2, which includes Aurora, Edward, Blunts Creek, parts of Chocowinity, and Gilead. And this is directly from ECP. I am seeking re-election to the Beaufort County Board of Education as a representative for District 2. I have served as a school board member for 28 years since 1994. During my tenure, District 2 and all of Beaufort County schools has been at the forefront of my care. Specific to District 2, Snowden Elementary has grown academically with meeting or exceeding growth on the North Carolina accountability model for the last five consecutive years. Southside High School has also met or exceeded growth on the North Carolina accountability model for the last three years. Chakawanity Primary has met or exceeded growth for the last five consecutive years as well. Snowden Elementary School, Southside High School, Chakawanity Primary School, and Chakawanity Middle School all have strong principal and assistant principal leadership as well as excellent professional educators and staff who desire and work toward great outcomes for all students. I held the position of school board member with great in integrity. I often visit our schools, speak with employees and students, and connect with our community and families directly at the school and community events. It is with great pleasure that I work on behalf of our community, including with the constituency who have elected and re-elected me to this position. It is my priority to ensure that your voices and vision for public school education is heard, acknowledged, and respected. If re-elected, I will continue to work with the Beaufort County Board of Education, superintendent, and our local and state legislators to lobby for our students and community. Over the years, I have fought to maintain Snowden Elementary School in the Aurora community. If re-elected, I will continue to fight against opposing beliefs and entities that desire to consolidate and or close Snowden Elementary School. The school is beloved by the Aurora Richland Township community and remains an integral part of revitalizing this community through providing all students a high quality education. Please re-elect me, ECP, to represent District 2 on the Beaufort County Board of Education. So now we will move to our in-person candidates. And since we are on District 2, which again is the Edward Aurora Blunts Creek precincts plus parts of Chocowinity and Gilead, we will move to our second candidate, Mr. Charles Hicks, for a two-minute opening statement. Hickman, I'm sorry. You know I know better. You know I know better. So Mr. Charles Hickman, District 2 candidate for Beaufort County Board of Education. Thank you. Um, I am Charles Hickman, <laughs> and I humbly ask for your vote on the, uh, for the school board. I'm running because proficiency scores for the students of Beaufort County Schools badly need improvement. Not only do I believe my background gives me strong qualifications for this position, but I am one who will speak up strongly to push for those improvements in our schools. I am a Beaufort County native, and graduated from Chocolaterty High School and East Carolina University, where I earned degrees in history and geography. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I served as an intelligence analyst and a member of the Nuclear Emergency Action Team. I co-authored and taught the Nuclear Surety Certification course. Returning to civilian life, I worked as a teacher in Beaufort County Schools, teaching U.S. history and world history. In the private sector, I have created and run several small businesses, including movies and mercantile. I have been active in church most of my life. I believe I am uniquely qualified for this position, especially for the crucial times we are now living in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. We'll move to our District 8 candidates which is um, Hunter's Bridge Precinct, Surrey Bath Precinct, and parts of Pantigo and Woodard's Pond, um, Mr. Donald Shreve.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I, uh, tonight, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the Daily News for hosting the candidate forum. Uh, my name is Donald Shreve, and I'm running for Bath District 8 Board of Education. My beautiful wife, Alexandra, and I have been married 39 years, and we have a daughter, Lauren, who lives in living with her husband. I'm a Christian conservative and believe in the importance of physical responsibility. Just a little about my background. I live in Bath. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I retired from two major airlines, Piedmont Airlines and U.S. Airways, in 1995. I served 10 years as a CEO of a Center for Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Victims, where I uh, wrote grants. When I got to the center, our, our, our center when I got there, our budget was $167,000. When I left, we were right at a million dollars. So I went out and found the money to sustain that center. While I was there, I, we also were credited for building a state-of-the-art safe house. I, I've also served as a sworn probation and parole officer for the state of North Carolina Department of Adult Corrections. I retired from there in 2013. That was a difficult job, but we enjoyed it. We felt that we made a difference in, in a lot of lives. Uh, I've been a substitute teacher for eight and a half years. Um, I currently substitute at two of our District 8 schools, and I believe that gives me a unique opportunity to be a board member and what those schools' needs are from day to day. I also won the Republican primary in May. I won the Volunteer of the Year for North Carolina in 2000. I also won the J.C. Penney Volunteer of the Year the same year with a Golden Rule Award, and they would Thank say you, that Mr. Me a $1,000 for that. Thank you so much. And our next candidate, District 8, Mr. John McCalla. Well, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be anywhere at my age. <laughs> I'm an independent candidate. I've self-financed my campaign. The reason for this is that I'm not beholden to anyone save the electorate, and that's who I'm going to work for, the people that elect me. I have no political ambitions. I never run for office. I don't plan to run for any office after this at 82. <clears throat> I, I don't want any prestige. I don't need it. I'm not involved because I need notoriety nor do I need the money. As a matter of fact, when I filed for candidacy, I didn't know that school board members were paid. Imagine that, how stupid am I? If elected, after reimbursing my campaign expenses, I plan to donate at least my first year's salary to the arts programs in the county. Successive donations will depend on the success of the initial donation. I want to put my money where my mouth is. So this is not about me, rather this is about the things that benefit children. Children in this country are in peril. They are bombarded by concepts that they cannot understand and cannot fight against. The intellectual corruption and evil perpetrated on them is criminal and a stain on our society. They are being subjected to the politics of hate and we don't want that to happen in Beaufort County. What we need is more local control over what takes place in our classrooms. We do not need the data people, you know, the bureaucrats and politicians from afar, telling us and our superintendent and our teachers what to teach, how to teach it, and why to teach it, and bribing us to do it. To end children are only numbers. There are means to an end. The hierarchy of top-down control in the seats. And local, I'm out of Your time. two minutes That's are up. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. <laughs> we're going to move to the question portion of the segment. And we're going to start the question with Mr. Donald Shreve and then go back to Mr. John LaCava and then Mr. Charles Hickman. And the first question for Board of Education candidates is, 
What is the school board's role in safety and security? What's the school board's role in safety and security? I believe that uh, for start, based on the fact that what's going on in our country, there should be a school assessment immediately done. I'm being told that that assessment is being held until the sheriff's race. I think that is not a good policy to follow. I think with what's going on across the country, that school assessment needs to be made now, immediately. I've, um, I've uh, proposed the possibility of adding an extra armed security. I would prefer an SRO, uh, but um, allied to, um, uh, to secure each school. Uh, I've spoken with the operations, uh, Vice President of Operations with Allied Security, and he agreed, but he did say that he thought it would be a good idea to at least have an extra security person at some of our high, higher demand schools. So, um, also I think the, um, that should be done. The doors should be kept locked at all times. Um, I think that they should have practice drills. Uh, for an active shooter, a lot of a lot of schools around the country is having that, and I think that we should have it here, and we shouldn't wait until an incident should happen. So I think I have some ideas if I get elected to the board that uh, I would want to work with the fellow board members and try to accomplish some of these things. I've been a hard worker all my life and uh, a good communicator, and I feel like we could do that. But I think that assessment needs to be done now, not in three weeks from now. You never know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shreve and Mr. John LaCava. And I'll read the question again. What is the school board's role in safety and security? The school board's role in safety and security. Well, if it were up to me, I'd make sure that some of my teachers had a concealed carry permit and carried in the classroom. I think that uh, if we put some signs on the entrances to some of these schools saying, quote, <clears throat> our teachers are armed and certified, good luck. That might prevent some of this stuff. As it is, people think the, these, these uh, weird twisted, twist, these twisted people that assault schools and school children uh, think that because it's a gun-free zone that they have uh, free entry and they can do whatever they want when they get in there. They need to know that that's not true, that they can be taken down quickly and efficiently. And I think that's what should happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Mr. Charles Hickman. And again, school board's role in safety and security. Well, the school, role, school board has a, has a role in that because the school board sets um, school policy so that's one of the things you, they would cover. You, you would have a policy. Um, as far as safety and security, it is correct that we'll know more after the sheriff's race as far as their role in this or not, but that's not the end all thing. Um, one of my military roles was as a physical security inspector. It's, it's not rocket science. You need to control your entry exit points and, and everybody, every school should have a, um, a plan regarding that. And I would push for that for an intricate plan that everybody exercised and, 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 and had like a fire drill and all that. And it became second nature. Uh, as far as the, <laughs> the, uh, the stuff about the armed teachers and all, I, I would not advocate all of your teachers having it. I've been a certified teacher and, and some of my associates would not be good candidates actually some would uh, somebody like like me for example who has a military background some people with police backgrounds they might that might be a consideration worth thinking about thank you mr. Hickman we're going to move to our second question for our school board candidates and we're going to start with mr. John McCava then we'll go to Charles Hickman and then Mr. Donald Shreve. 
And while you're making your way to the podium, I'll read the second question. What is the single most important issue facing the school board and how would you address it? What is the single most important issue facing the school board and how would you address it? Well, I've spent a considerable amount of time volunteering in the schools in my district. Uh, my experience has been that the students uh, tend to be uh, disrespectful and undisciplined. And I don't like to say that. I do not like to say that, but it's the truth. I've substituted long-term sub. I've been a volunteer in uh, a couple of different programs in the county. And I see that as an overriding factor. And I'll tell you why. Because if a student doesn't have self-discipline, you can't teach them anything. That's from my personal experience after having taught literally thousands of students over 38 years in public education. The other thing is, if the students don't have any respect for themselves, don't expect them to respect you. They're not going to respect you, all right? So they need to have, we need to find a way to get students to respect themselves and discipline themselves. That is the easiest kind of discipline. I used to tell students there are two things I can do for discipline, external or internal. And external discipline means I discipline you, or internal discipline means that you will discipline yourself and I don't have to deal with you. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, <clears throat> I would say that uh, beyond that, uh, you think the primary thing we need to do is make sure, ensure that students have success in something. We need to have a broad-based curriculum where students can find something in the curriculum that they can succeed at. If they're successful, they, that will engender self-respect and self-discipline, and the teacher's job is much, much easier. Thank you, Mr. LaCava. Mr. Hickman, again, the question is, what is the single most important issue facing the school board and how would you address it? Well, I believe we have a, a lot of issues, but if I had to pick a single issue, I, get, I think I would pick the, the uh, school proficiency sh uh, scores. A, a lot of our schools are under 50% proficient in math and reading, including Snowden in my district. Uh, we've got a problem when our high school graduates go to get a job and they can't read a ruler. That's, um, that's a problem. Um, so we, that's, gotta, that's got, to me, that's got to be the, the number one mission that we go after and there's some, some in close second. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. We are now gonna start our closing statements. Each candidate will have, what, what? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shreve. I had checked you off already. We now have candidate Donald Shreve with the question, what is the single most important issue facing the school board and how would you address it? And I did want to answer that. Yeah. I agree with Charles. I believe the most, um, I think it's close. I think the grade scores are the most important, but with a close second is safety in our schools. Um, eight, eight of our schools, this is a recent, uh, recent statistic data from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Eight out of our, our, our schools in this district, not in my district, but the whole district, eight are, and I wrote it down today, eight schools have a D rating in school scores. We need to do better for our students. Students need to be prepared when they leave college, they need to, or rather when they, excuse me, leave high school, they need to go to college, and then they need to prepare for a career. How can we do that when we're putting out our students that are making D averages? So we, we, we need a change. We need a change in our way of thinking. One thing that, that I would recommend is, um, 
as far as their curriculums go to get back to the basics, reading, writing, math, English, and social studies. We should be doing that. Thank you. And also, the school board contracts out their, uh, I think, most of their curriculums. I would like for the school board to, to, con or to have our own curriculum where we're appointing a, a, a school board member, a teacher, uh, possibly a student on there, and other professionals that we want to hire, and then determine what we want as far as teaching our children. Uh, she's holding the flag up. That's distracting. But, um, and teaching our children in teaching our children what they need. We, we need to be mindful of that, and we need to work hard, and I believe we can do it if... if Thank you, Mr. Shreve. Thank you. <laughs> now we're going to begin our closing statements, and I apologize for getting that mixed up, and we're gonna start right back over with the original order. We're gonna do Mr. Hickman, Mr. Shreve, and Mr. LaCava. So Mr. Hickman, you have two minutes for an opening statement. Well, closing it, statement, jeez. <laughs> I'm opening or closing? You're closing. Okay. <laughs> okay, in closing. Building maintenance and student attendance is important, but all of that is for nothing if our students are at less than 50% grade level proficient. Sadly, the state DPI reports show that that is the case in Bover County. We have eight schools in the county that receive a D grade, and one of the schools in District 2, my district, gets a D in reading and an F in math. I will be a voice for parents, I strongly believe, that communication with parents is critical to success in education. We need to listen to parents and we should welcome their help. I will work to keep divisive dogmas like critical race theory that make everything about race out of our schools. Instead, we should follow Dr. King's vision that people should be judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Also, we do not need to confuse young children with radical gender ideology. We need an academic environment conducive to learning, not divisive social engineering. Children should learn how to think, not what to think. If we keep doing the same things with the same people, we will keep getting the same results. We can do better. I want to be a voice for you and for this community. A vote for Charles Hickman is a vote for all of that. That is my promise. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. Mr. Donald Shreve, candidate for School Board District 8. Okay, I believe that you need to elect someone to the Board of Education who believes in a strong work ethic and can communicate and work with fellow board members in order to gain the public's confidence in our schools again and by ensuring student success as they transition into college and career. That's what I meant to say a little bit ago. I'm, I met with families on the journey and running for Board of Education in the last seven or eight months. One word I heard over and over again was that they wanted change when, um, I'm sorry, they wanted change in our current, current school board. They wanted change. They wanted to be heard and that their concerns were are taken seriously. They are very concerned with student grades. In future elections, families and the public in Beaufort County will continue to decide if they feel board members are not standing up for them and will vote for changes just like this election. I ask for your vote on November the 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shreve. And Mr. John McCava, two minutes for your closing statement. Candidate for District 8. To finish what I started to say, there is a hierarchy of top-down control that has to cease 
Local citizens, school administrators, and teachers must work together to revitalize local public education. <clears throat> this is a democracy. This is democracy in action. Show up and speak up. For those of you who are proponents of only the three R's, I would suggest that your interpretation of education is too narrow. There are many more things in the history of the universe that need exposure. The ancient Greeks taught three subjects to their children, the arts, gymnasium, and logic. And if you want to uh, take that concept to the modern day, they're talking about mod body, mind, and spirit. We're not doing very well by children's bodies these days across the country. We are not doing a great job with their minds. They are being propagandized rather than taught. They are not getting a classical education. And the other thing is, we need to be able to defend ourselves as a country. And as we stand now, we can't afford to be weak, out of shape, and overindulged. We do little to provide students with real life experiences. Students need to get out of the classroom and see the necessity for learning. It's difficult for students to see the connection between the classroom and the real world. This kind of exposure spurs the creative and imaginative mind, and this leads to success. And that is a big thing, and I've mentioned it before, that students need. Every student needs to experience success in something. <clears throat> the child is under attack, and we need to stand in the door. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nakava. I'd like to thank all three of our um, school board candidates that are here tonight. We really appreciate you coming and sharing your vision with um, all the folks here. So that completes our school board segment.